If you've ever looked at the FAA's drone rules and felt completely overwhelmed, you're not alone. It's a lot to take in. At UAV Coach, we've helped thousands of students navigate these rules, and we're here to make them easier to understand. That's why today, we're breaking down the key regulations into simple, clear terms. By the end of this video, you'll not only understand the rules, but also the reasons behind them, giving you the confidence to fly your drone safely and legally. Let's get started. First, decide why you're flying the drone. If you're flying for fun, you need to take a short test called TRUST to prove you understand the basic safety rules. It's free and takes less than 30 minutes. Check it out in the links below. If you're flying for work or to make money, you'll need to get a Part 107 certificate. To get your certificate, you need to pass a two-hour exam. We have an industry-leading online test prep course for the exam, which you can check out below. You can't fly your drone over people unless it meets specific safety standards or you've been given permission by the FAA through a waiver, which only commercial pilots can request. A good rule of thumb is if the person isn't involved in your flight or under a covered structure, don't fly over them. Always keep your drone where you can see it. If it's too far away, you won't be able to control it safely and that could cause an accident. This doesn't mean you need to stare at your drone during the entire flight. That would kind of ruin the point of looking down at your controller to check something. However, it just means that when you look back up, you'll be able to easily spot where your drone is. Think of it like walking a dog. If it runs out of sight, you might lose it. Once you get a drone, there are places you can't fly, period. These include spots near airports, military bases, or national parks. You can use an app like Autopilot or Aloft to check where it's safe to operate your drone. An easy way to remember is if it's Class G airspace, you can fly no problem. If it's any of the other classes or letters, like B, C, D, or E airspace, you need prior authorization. Getting this approval is like making a reservation at a restaurant. It ensures there's room for you and everything is organized. The great thing is the apps I just mentioned tell you what airspace you're in, and what steps you need to take to fly, and it usually only takes 30 seconds to get approval. Drones must fly below 400 feet above the ground unless you're near a structure like a building. You can fly up to 400 feet above the structure, but be aware of the airspace and watch for other aircraft. You can also think of the sky like an elevator. Drones have their own floor, and planes and helicopters are on the higher floors so stay on your level to avoid collisions. You can fly a drone at night, but only if it has lights that can be seen from at least three miles away. And if you're a commercial pilot, besides the added light, you'll also need to take a free online recurrent training. Think of it like riding a bike at night. You need reflectors and lights to be seen. Registering your drone is like registering your car. It gives it a legal identity, links it to you, and ensures you're following the rules for safe operations. Registration lasts for three years and is only $5. If you are a recreational pilot, you need to register your drone if it's over 0.55 pounds. And if you're a commercial pilot, you need to register your drone regardless of weight. Drones can't fly over moving vehicles. Unless the drone meets certain requirements, the vehicles are in a restricted area, everyone in the vehicles knows a drone is flying, and the drone is constantly moving. Drones must broadcast their location and operator information through something called Remote ID. Remote ID is like a digital license plate for your drone. It broadcasts who's flying and where, basically allowing other people and authorities to know where the drone is flying and who's responsible for it. Most new drones already have this built in, but if you have an older one, you might need to get a device that attaches to the outside. If your drone causes an injury or damages property worth more than $500, 
you need to report it to the FAA within 10 days. Reporting an accident is like filing an insurance claim after a car accident. It's not about blame, but making sure the situation is handled properly and recorded. And there you have it, the most common FAA drone rules broken down into simple terms. Some of these rules might seem strict, but they're all about safety for you and everyone else. We also have videos covering almost all of these topics in much more detail, so make sure to check out our channel and specifically our Can I Fly My Drone playlist. If you have any other questions related to drone rules, ask them in the comments below. If you found this video helpful, make sure to like and subscribe and turn on that notification bell so you don't miss out on any of our other drone videos. Until next time, blue skies and safe flying.